Welcome back everyone, this is Mondo All Day, back to the video, and in this video, I'll be doing an overview of the Absolute Edition Batman The Court of Hours, the reprint edition of 2023 edition. As always, I'll be talking about a little bit of the story, the art, and of course, if it's worth your purchase or not. Before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button, to not support channel, put the key up today, and watch videos like this. So let's take a look at front of the slipcover, pretty cool art, by Greg Capullo, which I'll talk about in a bit. The spine, the back, put this to the side over here, front of the book, the spine, the back, and this is an absolute edition, so the actual sizes is going to be a lot bigger than your normal type book, and I'll do a full spread image of the book itself for the absolute edition, which, there you go. All right, now let me put this slip cover over here. Oops, there you go. Now let's take a look at what's inside. It does come with this as well too. So what is this book about? So the book starts off with Bruce Wayne wants to do more for Gotham besides being the Batman. So what he decides to do is reinvest his money into Gotham for a better future. The story progresses of the first story and I said first story because they're actually two different stories. Technically, maybe a third one if you call the extra on the very, very back, which yeah, I won't talk about it too much because I'll spoil it. But there's two main stories. And so the story progresses of the first story and a secret society reveals themselves to Batman, which is the Court of Owls. And now Batman has to stop them. And then that is the gist of the first story, as I mentioned. The second story is going to be about the Court of Owls, which essentially is the Court of Owls sends out their talents to go out and kill certain people, which I'm not going to talk about too much, because I'll spoil it who and why. And that is the gist of the whole entire book. It's just two stories, technically three. We want to call the third story, the very last extra, a story. And so with that said, I like this story. But it does have its issues. So let's talk about the negative, I guess you can say. So some of the issues is that the story itself is pretty predictable. I mean, if you start reading this book within maybe halfway into it, you're going to be like, okay, I have a feeling it's going to end like this. And it ends that way. And that's the problem with this book. It's very predictable. There are some moments where it really wants to be like poetic and thought provoking. But it just comes off as very like eh, kind of like okay you're trying too hard. Another issue I have is well, not really issue but something I don't like. Especially with Scott Snyder writing is that it does take its time to pick up. Meaning that in the very beginning when it's building the story the dialogue is very heavy dialogue. Which is not a bad thing because I get it. It's trying to build that story right. Character development. Story development. And I get that. But it takes a while for the story to pick up. And once it picks up, it definitely picks up, but it also has another issue with Scott Snyder's writing. And again, this is my preference choice to each their own. And the issue is that with Scott Snyder, when it comes to like the action scenes per se, he tends to, not always, but he tends to have heavy dialogue with certain characters. I'll give you an example. So let's say, you know, Batman is fighting, I'm just going to give you an example. Batman is fighting Joker. I'm okay for dialogue to occur right maybe one liners like one or two here and there especially like when they're fighting but with scott snyder though the problem is he has like a really long speeches like in the middle of a fight and it's like come on pick up the pace like this is a climax to the whole entire story like in this book here the second story when the villain is revealed when i talk about it in a bit more about that it's like okay this is it this is the climax and the action scene is great but unfortunately, though, it is heavy dialogue from here and there. And it's like, come on. This is the moment where you got to get people hooked in. You got to let the action take its toll, I guess you can say. But it does have heavy dialogue. And it's just a bit unnecessary. And it's like, why couldn't you say all this prior to this buildup? Hope that makes sense. It's not a deal breaker, but something that I noticed, especially with the Batman Who Laughs hardcover story, which I have a link somewhere. Same thing, when there's like action going on, heavy dialogue. Not all the time, but it's there, and it's like, oh, it slows down the pacing. So, 
that's another issue I have with this book. Another one, it's not really a deal breaker, but it is something to mention, is going to be the villain himself. The villain is... Eh, especially in that second story when it's revealed who it is. Honestly, I was just not really into it. I didn't hate it, but I was like, okay. I get what Scott Schneider was trying to do. He's trying to add surprises. Because he does have surprises here and there. But for that surprise, I guess you can say, it's just kind of... Ugh. Not bad or horrible, it's just like, okay, whatever. And again, those are my negatives. The positives, though, is that the story itself is really creative. I like that. Creativity is there. The fight scenes are pretty cool as well, too. There's some twists in here, which I won't say who, what, or anything. So I don't want to give it away. But overall, the story itself, it is enjoyable, and I actually like it. It's actually good overall. It's just some issues here and there, like I mentioned. Now... This is the Absolute Edition, and if you don't know what that means, is that this is like the best version to read any comic. I say that because the art in here, it is fantastic. And reading it in the Absolute Edition, definitely, definitely must buy an Absolute Edition. Because the paper quality on here is thicker than your normal paper or omnibus, and so... The R just stands out. I mean, just look at this gloss. Look at that, right? I'm trying to hold it a certain way so there's no glare. But, I mean, the paper quality is a lot thicker than a regular omnibus. And it's a lot more glossy, as you can tell. And the R just pops and it shines. And having the Greg Capullo art in this format of Absolute is just breathtaking. I'm telling you, if you've never read this story, definitely get this book or this version of The Court of Owls because... I'm telling you, when you start reading it, you're going to be like, dude, this is amazing. This is amazing. And having it with this kind of paper quality, it is just fantastic. The reds look reds. The blacks are blacks. I mean, it is just like reading a book in OLED. You know what I mean? Fantastic. So, <laughs> the art is good, especially with this paper quality, which is the Absolute Edition. Do you need to have prior knowledge? No, you're perfectly fine. I read this book years ago without any prior knowledge, and I was perfectly fine. Pacing, as I mentioned, it does start off slow, but then it definitely does pick up. But it's in the mix. It's either below average or above average. So overall, though, what do I give the Absolute Edition of Batman, The Court of Owls? Honestly, I give it a thumbs up. Even though I do have issues with it, it's still a solid story. It is fun seeing the Court of Owls. It's fun seeing Batman being challenged by the Talons. And seeing the story play out is actually really, really good. It's just, it has its small issues here and there. And a lot of the issues are just more subjective. Because I know some people who love Scott Snyder. They're like a fan of Scott Snyder. And anything he does... It's like a saying, and I get it. I completely get it. So if you're that kind of person, if you like Scott Snyder, everything about Scott Snyder, then you're going to love his book. For me, I do like Scott Snyder stuff, but just sometimes, as I mentioned, that the pacing can be slowed down unnecessarily. So once again, what do I give the absolute Batman, the Court of Owls book or story? Give it a thumbs up for me. And towards the back of the absolute, you get the variant covers. And as you can see that glare, as I mentioned regarding the paper qualities, look at that. And I'm telling you, when you see it in person with this paper quality, it'll just, it's beautiful. So look at that. I'm trying to hold the book a certain way, so there's no glare, but it's almost impossible because I'm telling you, it's very, very glossy, but the art just pops and it stands out. And some sketch. Ooh, the talon right there. 1940s, 80s talon. King Owl armor. Pretty dope. McFarlane, if you're watching this, so I want one of this. And then inside Batman number one. The script. And of course, some sketch. I'm gonna skip some pages that way you guys can see all this stuff because at the end, at the end of this book is just gonna be a lot of the sketches and so forth and how they actually created the issues itself. All right, 
And that is, as I say, that. Let me know what you guys think. Have you read this book? Do you plan on reading this book? Leave it in the comment section below. As always, make sure you hit the subscribe button to not support channel, but to keep up to date and watch videos like this. This includes an overview of the Absolute Batman, the Court of Owls reprint edition or 2023 reprint edition. And on to the next one.